morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Greg Mayfield. I'm going to kick off the introduction to Gigamon very briefly for those of you that aren't familiar with the company. And by the way, just to show a hand, how many of you are unfamiliar with Gigamon and the solutions we offer? Okay, just a few of you, obviously. So we'll, we'll go through a brief introduction, then we'll get down to the, the meat of the discussion. First, I'll kick off through this introduction. We'll have Sesh Sayani over here also talk in more detail about our cloud solution. And this here also will go into detail with some of the demos and so forth. So moving ahead, let's first introduce Gigamon. Gigamon's been around. We've been a public company since uh, 2004. Excuse me, we've been around since 2004. Been a public company since 2013. Uh, our focus is on visibility. So what we, we use as a tagline is see what matters. So we help organizations identify all the traffic that's of interest running across their organization. And that could be full data uh, sessions. It could be a subset of certain applications. It could be metadata. But we provide access to that data in real time so tools like monitoring and application and security tools can actually be more efficient and run better. Uh, we're a growing company, uh, growing a, we're over 750 employees. We also have uh, presence in over 20 countries. Customers were growing as well in that space, over 2,500 customers and growing, and um, <coughs> just about all vertical industries you can imagine. We're uh, very dominant in financials, government agencies, as well as uh, healthcare and even uh, retail. In fact, I'll go into a little more detail on that. Just to give you an idea of who deploys our solutions, we're across all these verticals, as I mentioned a moment ago. So you'll see us in the top banks. We're also in healthcare or in the top agencies in the US government. We're also in the top tech companies. So when you think of the big, big folks out there, like, for example, Amazon and Apple, we're providing solutions for their IT infrastructure, uh, as well as mobile operators, service providers. So we sell to enterprises, and we sell to service providers. We're not a... Um, SMB company, so we don't sell to the small, uh, you know, mom and pop organizations, if you will. And our fundamental premise is <coughs> network visibility. And so if you can't see it, then you can't manage, secure, and understand it. And we use that as a kind of a marketing tagline, manage, secure, and understand your data. You'll hear us also use the term data in motion. We're not the inventor of that phrase, but the thing is, it's basically saying what's of interest to the customer, and we can get down to the packet level or the session level and identify what they're, they're looking for, what's most important to them and to their business. Uh, interesting stat here is that uh, 3, 4, 75% of SecOps teams basically state that they need better visibility today. There's just too much information traversing the network and they're overwhelmed with that amount of traffic. And then when you think about security threats or potential malware and data breaches, that's also part of uh, their concerns and their troubles. We help them, uh, we alleviate their pain, if you will, by providing access to that visibility and then also exposing potential threats uh, as needed. To break this down a little bit more when we talk about network visibility, think about it this way, and kind of an evolution of what people uh, have gone through and IT uh, teams have gone through. Years ago, remember the SMP standard? There was even Armon, uh, you know, syslogs. Certainly provide some um, visibility into those uh, devices that are providing that information. It's very device centric. You know, is the CPU or is the memory low? Is the device up or down? What's the name and so forth? Very basic usage data. Then you can evolve into metadata. Metadata, basically data of data, and that provides flow information, you know, based on IP fix or net flow. And that provides a subset of information like you know, what conversations are happening on the network, who's talking to who, and so forth. And then beyond that, you have live traffic. Live traffic provides the most uh, complete view of what's happening on the network. So where did this traffic go? What did the IPS do with it? For example, what did a firewall do with this information that we just submitted to it? Um, why is the traffic slow on Tuesday afternoon or something like that? So live traffic which you have access to via taps, span, ports, uh, virtual mirroring vir uh, and virtual uh, solutions, provide that level of data. Our focus is on taking advantage of really the last two areas. And when you think of the cloud environment, since we're focusing on the cloud, realize historically a lot of what's been going on in access to data and visibility in the cloud has been in the first two columns here. Basically looking at you know, syslog information or flow log information. So what we're doing is we're extending that and exposing more and more data within the uh, public cloud environments and private cloud environments 
by providing access to the live traffic and feeding it to the appropriate tools. So we've actually, in, in a sense, extended what has historically been in the, uh, visible in the cloud environment. We'll go into that in more detail. When you think about our platform, we talk about our visibility platform, think about this in, in uh, a very simple kind of sandwich type of way, if you will. Think about any network environment on the bottom. So whether it's on-prem at a data center or we have remote sites or a, say service provider and then of course cloud environments, public or private. That's your basis and obviously a lot of organizations have a mix of those environments. On top you also have tools and applications. These can be your APMs, your NPMs, your uh, firewalls, your analytics tools and so forth. We fit right in the middle of those. So we provide the capability to support any network environment and access data across those network environments. And support the existing tool sets and feed data to those tools appropriately. And once again, focusing on managing that data, controlling it, securing and, and enabling better security in that environment, and then understanding, basically uh, pulling that uh, data together and say, this is what, <coughs> this is what matters to you. It's, that's extremely important from an understanding standpoint, for example, say in service providers. Who are their subscribers? Who are the, the top subscribers that they actually want to appeal to and support from a business perspective? If you break that up in a little more detail, and this is where we're getting down and kind of peeling back the onion, if you will, is that within that layer, we have three uh, relief areas that we, we provide solutions with. First on the bottom, we call them visibility nodes. That's where we provide our hardware and software. Uh, our appliances, for example, that sit, say, in data centers. Now in the cloud environment, for example, we're talking about public cloud, AWS, in that case, it's a software-based solution. So we're providing a software-based solution that runs on the instances within AWS. That's our visibility nodes. Above that, and on top of that, we have our traffic intelligence. That's really, I think, the bread and butter of what we're offering here because this is the intelligence that allows us to slice and dice the data appropriately um, and then feed that appropriately to whatever tools are out there. So whether it's a security tool or a monitoring tool or an analytics tool and so forth. Traffic intelligence is really where we provide the, uh, the, the power of our solution. And then it's man managed and monitored appropriately through this orchestration capability. We have something called Gig uh, GigaView FM Fabric Manager. That is the management orchestration tool that basically configures and, and allows you to centralize the control of the access to that data across your network environment, across physical, virtual, and cloud environments. So that kind of breaks it down. Let's go back, uh, go down one layer deeper. And this is what it looks like from a solution set. So when you talk about what we sell, names of products and so forth, you see it here. So I mentioned a moment ago that we have hardware and software and the visibility nodes if we, if we go from the bottom up. So in this case, we have uh, you know, H series, HC series and so forth that we sell for uh, environments and physical uh, networks. What we're talking about today for public cloud is the V series. So we're talking about this software-based solution set. We also have traffic aggregators and network taps, of course. That's where our business started. On top of that, we have our uh, proven operating system, GigaView OS. There's several capabilities we have within that, like flow mapping that lets you filter the traffic. Gigastream is basically load balancing. We have the inline bypass, which is really important. That provides resiliency, so we can route intelligently around devices. Uh, if they go down, if there's a fault and so forth, we could switch from in-band, or inline, I should say, to out-of-band, and do that very intelligently. So we keep the network up and running and resilient. And then these are all the features I mentioned a moment ago within our um, traffic intelligence area. We call those GigaSmart features. So you'll see things like <coughs> packet filtering, uh, GTP correlation, obviously, for, um, for some service provider networks, SSL decryption, slicing, and so forth. So there's a, a myriad of, of features that we have here appropriately that provide that traffic intelligence. Then once again, on top, we have the orchestration piece. I mentioned it a moment ago. We call it GigaView FM. Through APIs, we actually integrate with solutions like AWS. We also work with other partner solutions, uh, VMware, for example, OpenStack, Splunk, the list goes on. So uh, through APIs, we provide tighter integration with these solution sets from third-party vendors. So One is this just a cloud-based option, or can I run this uh, on-prem? You can run this on-prem as well. Okay, so then in terms of how it's doing, it sounds like the traffic intelligence is the meat of yes. the product. Mm -hmm. So how is it doing that quietly on the wire? Is, are there agents or agentless? How, how are you doing that? We can actually do that, you know, well, if, if you have a, a dedicated appliance, obviously okay. all the power and processing is within that appliance. If you're doing it in, say, a, a cloud environment like AWS, that's actually an agent that we actually install, a virtual tap, if you will, that we put on the solutions. 
we put on the instances. Yeah, we'll also cover other options that are not region-based as well. So, depending on where the customer is, how, how they want to apply Okay. This. Yeah. So, the customers have options. Uh, I mentioned a moment ago when we talk about the solutions that uh, we offer, uh, just to kind of step back a little bit, we tend to sell to three environments within IT infrastructures. We start out from a net ops standpoint, selling, selling to the network operations teams. Several years ago, we started adding more and more security uh, functionality, like for example, SSL decryption, as I mentioned before, or even um, application session filtering, where we can actually get down to the packet or session level. Question? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, you're saying you sell to security, but you're decrypting SSL. That seems counterintuitive to me. Uh, for SSL solutions, because more and more malware is, is uh, using encrypted traffic, data breaches are using encrypted traffic to try and sneak through the environment, and they go, typically go undetected by the tools if they don't have the ability to decrypt it. So we offer that where we can offload some of the tools that may do it. Some firewalls, for example, may decrypt SSL traffic, um, but there's a price to pay because there's a performance hit because it's very uh, CPU intensive. So we can decrypt that traffic and then expose any potential threats that are in it by sending it, say, to an anti-malware, or send it to a firewall, and so forth, and not burden that firewall or that IPS or that anti-malware with the capability of decrypting traffic on their own while doing many other things. So you've figured out a way to factor large, large numbers in, in linear time? <laughs> yeah, we, we do decryption in real time and then feed it to the to other tools that can then process it appropriately. Uh, we've been doing this for several years. We we've initially started out doing it in a sense out of band. So you can actually feed, say, a monitoring or analytics tool. So it could be used for logging purposes or monitoring purposes. What's changed recently in this past year is we provide the capability to do that inline. So we're in the data path and we can actually in real time actually uh, decrypt that traffic based upon policies and then feed it to the appropriate tools. And what's important is because we don't do all traffic, the policies let you select which are what's important to you. For example, in a lot of environments today, you, know, you have compliance issues and data privacy issues. So it kind of an all or none approach doesn't necessarily work because if you want to decrypt everything, you're probably violating some type of compliance mandate. Uh, if you want to decrypt um, you know, just a very small amount or none, you may exp be exposing yourself to risk and malware that's using uh, SSL TLS traffic. So policies let you choose what's appropriate for your organization. I'll give you a simple example. Um, say yeah. going. I understand the theory. I'm just. Uh, you, yeah. you say that basically you've just told me that you've broken TLS. Um, that's. We haven't broken TLS. No, we we actually were. Understand. We're a. Um, you, if you you man in the middle. We're a man in the middle. Yeah, yeah, we're a man okay. in the middle. But how does that work for malware, which is using keys that you don't control? For keys that we don't control, the thing is obviously, w w as a man in the middle. Yeah. We actually have to have the certificates and load them up appropriately. Right. And, and malware wouldn't use that. Would it? In some cases, they're using standard. They're using certs and trying to hide with another solutions out there. Right. Okay. We can go to that in, in more detail when we okay. go later. But it's um, uh, in fact that maybe another separate breakout uh, conversation. Yeah, that's like getting a bit that. in the weeds. I think. Can I just ask about? In a, I know there isn't a typical installation because you're obviously cut, um, covering a whole lot of touch points. Yeah. But how much of the product, um, if you had to install it, would you just use Gigamon, or how much would a normal an, an enterprise then hand off to other tools to do the analytics, the security, the performance management? Because at the moment, that little top black uh, black yep. line at the top is a vast other whole suite of tools. That's correct. I just would like to understand the sort of the, how they fit together. I would say it's probably like more <coughs> one tenth of it. Would you say that's correct? One tenth to one twenty of the other tools that are out there. So, uh, yeah, actually, so we, we have a slide on all the ecosystem partners that we play with, mm -hmm. uh, getting close to 100 right now, uh, and every, every day we keep adding but more. There, there's, a, there's enough built-in um, functionality with, with the Gigamon that people would install Gigamon itself rather than just using it as a tap that always has to handle to other tools. Is that... So more than likely, I, I would say more than likely there's always a tool that is analyzing the traffic from okay. Gigamon. Mm -hmm. uh, they may start off with one tool, but typically they, they actually have multiple tools trying to analyze this traffic. And that's where the Gigamon traffic, Gigamon can actually replicate that same traffic to all these tools in real time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you basically you think, a nice simple way to think of it is a, is a network tap that can feed off into other tools that can then do whatever cl clever analytics. The only thing I would add on top of that is tap with intelligence, right? We, so we can filter and specifically okay, yeah. redirect, specifically send the traffic to the rest so of the So context sensitive. Context sensitive okay. intelligence. Yeah. And just because of scale, I mean, as Sesh mentioned, 
you know, typically people may have one or two tools that, that they may use as a basis, but as they grow and they add more and more monitoring or security tools, we can scale and do that appropriately. And, and, yeah, my, my, my question was based around, also based around enterprises don't buy Gigamon to do security performance management, analytics and everything. They're buying it as a tool to be able to get the data to send it somewhere else to do. That's correct, yeah. We're an enabler. Okay. So we enable tools to be more effective and access to that data so these tools are more effective. Thanks. Uh, the other use case that I also quickly add is, in some cases there are bake-off situations where they're comparing one tool versus the other with real live traffic, and they want to plug into Gigamon to say, hey, how does, they can get traffic already into the net, into, the, into their analytics, how can I compare tool A versus with tool B, and then let me, let me send the same traffic to both and see how the performance happens, and then pick, pick and choose which one makes sense for them. Yeah, customers like we can run multiple POCs yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. One interesting point about that, when we talk about all these features, we talk about what we call GigaSmart. Uh, a subset of those features we have are really targeted towards security ops environments, SecOps teams. And we call those features GigaSecure. So GigaSmart are the intelligent features that we offer, the, the traffic intelligence. But a subset of those, like SSL decryption, for example, or NetFlow metadata generation, those specifically benefit SecOps environments. And so we call that GigaSecure, and this is our delivery <coughs> platform. We, we provided this and announced this several years ago. We have built that up to add more and more functionality, and you see some of those key functions right here. Metadata generation, application session filtering, uh, SSL decryption, and so forth. And once again, we're pro providing this functionality across physical, virtual, and cloud-based environments. So it's consistent. Seth mentioned our ecosystem. We have a fast and growing ecosystem. We're, we're pushing 100. Obviously for today, a subset of these, these are all this, the vendors that we work with and we partner with, um, a subset of those obviously support the cloud environment. And we'll go into that in more detail in our session. But you see we cover uh, various areas, you know, security and management, uh, vulnerability management and monitoring solutions, service provider, uh, application performance monitoring, and then infrastructure, for example, like AWS for the public cloud. One interesting point you want to highlight, just our, our leadership in the marketplace, um, IHS just uh, announced this report in May and highlighting us as a leader when you think about providing access to uh, network data and network visibility. We're leading at 36% overall and that's more than twice our competitors uh, from a market share standpoint. Interesting enough, in the government space I mentioned earlier from verticals that we play in, besides financials, for example, in healthcare, government's very dominant for us and we're uh, almost 60% in the market share for gov uh, government agencies. So, nice highlight of uh, our growth and our leadership. So just to summarize, we're a visibility vendor. We provide access and visibility and control of network data. We could do that in physical, virtual, and cloud environments. Uh, we promote, basically, we allow <coughs> customers to see what matters and let them manage, secure, and understand the data that's traversing their networks. Uh, in the case of uh, virtualized and cloud environments, we provide that pervasive visibility as well. So we allow customers to go beyond their uh, kind of syslog and flow log environments and have better access and control of that data traversing those cloud environments, whether private or public. Our in traffic intelligence is key. We call that GigaSmart, but for security in environments, we call that GigaSecure. And obviously, we're running on top of a proven, established operating system. We call that GigaView. So that's been around for quite some time. And from a performance and scale and resiliency standpoint, we provide uh, you know, extensibility and scale to support even the largest environments. As I mentioned before, we're supporting large enterprises as well as service provider environments. So with that, let's talk in more detail, and I'll turn it over to Sesh here appropriately. Any questions just on a high level of what Gigamon does before I... Uh, Switch over the microphone. Actually, I have a question. So, when it comes to it, there's a lot, the big there's a big security play here, but can this be used on prem for even something smaller? Like, I have a five o'clock slowdown every day, and it affects you know this group of people. Can you help dissect where that slowdown might be? Like maybe somebody's Certainly. downloading. Sure. So, so yeah. let's imagine one of this. Without naming any tool vendors, let's imagine one of the tool vendors in an ecosystem is actually an application performance tool, right? Okay. Or a network performance tool. And they pick, let's say, your network, you're the user, and says, that my network is slowing down every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Can I redirect my segment of the traffic, mm -hmm. your subnet, if you will, and then forward it to that tool to analyze what's going on? Is that an application okay. response time? What else is going on? So that's where the tools can use the traffic that Gigamon provides 
for them to inspect and analyze. Now, what did Gigamon do? Obviously, we extracted the traffic, acquired the traffic from that network mm -hmm. using our spans or using our taps. But we also were able to filter it down specifically to your, uh, your subnet, if you will, or your network. And we can also add more intelligence. Say, let's say I'm using the application or HTTP port, for example. I'm only using that port. And I want to even narrow it down even further. Don't care about all the other applications. Give me only the HTTP traffic. So as you can see, the peeling of the onion starts happening. And then now the application analysis tool can look at it and say, yep, I got the data exactly I want. You got the big haystack. You're trying to thread that needle to get you the answer quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's where, that's where this helps. Yeah, and when we talk about making tools more efficient, for example, a very simple analogy like that would be, why feed non-video traffic to a video server or a video engine? At, at a very basic level, we can do that. Same with email traffic or web traffic. We can just feed that in a very simple way to those tools so we're not wasting bandwidth and processing. Sorry. But the other thing I would also like to add, uh, Greg talked about the GigaSmart intelligence. The reason I'm, we want to cover that before we go to the cloud is there is the classical L2 to L4. Just look at the headers and you're good with it. Mm -hmm. But some of these functions can go deep into the packet from L4 to L7, right? specifically around, let's say, I want to look for a specific pattern inside a packet and only get that packet to, to be inspected. How would you do that? The L2 to L4 is not enough. Right? So that's where the, the, ins the deep content inspection becomes more relevant as you send that packet. A question about SSL decryption. So think of it, if that payload is encrypted, you cannot actually go get that, go get that inside. So maybe you can decrypt it once, and then now all the analysis tools that are out there can actually go look for that pattern match, and then only send that, pa that packet over to that tool. So each tool is not doing the decryption by themselves. So different ways of service chaining these features will get more leverage out of the tool that you already purchased.